the clutch should be here today so I'm just doing some little things painted the valve cover to match the block got the fan and the radiator back in got the air box in but I'm still waiting on that mass airflow sensor I'm gonna go buy some uh, some vacuum lines so I can put all some all new vacuum lines in so I still need to hook up the vacuum advance into there because right now it's just unhooked and it's gonna run rough without a vacuum line there and a mass airflow sensor. But looks pretty good. Can't wait to detail the engine bay. I wish I did that when the motor was out, but I didn't have a pressure washer because I'm at a complex. So I'll just have to go to a car wash and carefully soak everything down around the motor and pressure wash everything away. But yeah, the clutch should be here today probably not going to drive it today just because I haven't got new trans fluid for this yet. I mean, I'll see if it moves, but that's about it. I'm not going to push it. It's time. All right. Just got that in 20 minutes ago. Finished the wiring on the uh, transmission. Got the new harness in. Gonna throw in the uh, new throw out bearing, crawl under there, get the clutch put on and bolt it up, and then manhandle this bitch into that bitch and crank the bitch. So in the process of trying to get the uh, pressure plate and clutch on, we ended up getting it on and I was about to put the transmission in and then I realized the uh, the pressure plate forks were kind of bent in a little bit on one side and um, I was like, okay, maybe it's just not, you know, torqued down properly. So I took the pressure plate off and I was looking at the, uh, the flywheel and these dowels weren't lining up to the uh, pressure plate at all. And so I thought maybe I got the wrong pressure plate, but I got the... Uh, the, uh, the one that was on here and looked the exact same pressure plate. I was looking at some pictures of when this was rusted and comparing the dowels and this one is supposed to be right here. You can kind of see it how they're like that short and that one sticks up a lot further. And so I got to go drop this back off at the machine shop, have them pull this dowel out and put it back to here. So the pressure plate will actually line up. So that's fun. Trans isn't going in the car today. All right, back from the machine shop, and they moved the dowel over for me. Now the clutch is in, flywheel's in, pressure plate's in. All the dowels are in the right spots. Like they should be. So I think it was one of those, it was one of the top ones that was getting hung up over here on the side. Yeah, it was in that hole right there. It was getting hung up and it was causing the, uh, the forks, or I guess you call them fingers on a pressure plate. They were sitting uneven. And I thought maybe I did that when I was trying to put the transmission on and the uh, input shaft, I thought bent one of the fingers and I'm like, fuck, now I gotta buy a whole new pressure plate. But now I just uh, loosened up all the bolts and it went back flat. And then I started looking at it real close and then I realized the, uh, the dowels weren't lining up. So, got that taken care of. Now we just gotta finagle this transmission. You see me? Yeah, I'm playing up into here. Try to finagle this transmission up into here by myself. So let's see how it goes. Oh, there's some rot. All right, so I found that installing an M46 by yourself is very, very difficult. And it keeps falling off the jacks and you know what not. So I've come up with a solution. Grab yourself a camshaft, stick it there, grab you a ratchet strap, stick it there, loop it around the transmission, or at least the, uh, the shift arm right there, and ratchet it up. That'll get the back end off, and that'll give me enough room to stick a jack under there and lift it up 
and push it into there while suspending the back end so I ain't got to move it around and stuff it'll free hang so uh, we'll see how this works it's <laughs> very haggard uh, but I think it'll do just fine so after fighting with the transmission about I think it's been like four hours I think the uh, the camshaft rope trick worked out well yeah pans a valve cover by the way So if you need something to support the rear end and give you a little wiggle room, a spare camshaft and a rope ratchet will work. Got the transmission bolted up, a couple of bolts. There's like three or four in there holding it up. Uh, I just put the starter bolts in, about to tighten those down. Then I'm gonna leave the drive shaft. No, actually I'll probably hook it up, fuck it. And then we'll start it with the drive shaft and the transmission in and see if that starter still sounds weak. Uh, it might have been because of the janky bolts I was using. Um, they were kind of bending the starter a little bit, so it was putting a lot of pressure on it trying to start. That's why it sounded like it was having bad compression or something like that in that first video of the start. So we'll see what this does once this is all put in. And we'll lower it back down and start it back up. Well, the transmission is in the car, drive shaft's hooked up, shifter's hooked up, everything's hooked up. Went to go start the car, ran for three seconds, and died. And it won't restart. The injectors aren't firing once again. This is the same issue we had in a couple videos ago. I was explaining. And I ripped apart the interior and the dash and trying to trace the wires from the fuel pump relay because they weren't getting power. And so far I've narrowed it down to the bad ignition switch. That's what I'm hoping it is. I've got one on order, it should be here next week. It's like 40 bucks. What I realized is that when you turn the key, the door dingers never worked. Um, the blower motor never worked. The power windows never worked. What else? Anyway, I was jiggling with the uh, ignition switch. And let me get in the car, it's raining. So you can see the mess we're dealing with. I was messing with the ignition switch. And at one point, the door dinger came on when the key was in the ignition. And that lasted maybe all of 10 minutes and then it stopped working. Um, and as I was cranking on it, trying to like tap it and get it to fire over, the uh, I eventually lost cranking so the starter doesn't get power anymore. But I could still hear the, the fuel pump relays clicking on and messing with it some more, eventually I lost the relay clicking so that doesn't even get power anymore. And so it has to be that switch. So, after doing all of this, tracing it all back, I mean, all the wires look good. You know, I can't find any frayed wires anywhere. So, it can't be wiring. And I pulled the ignition switch off and tried cleaning it. And I think that just made it progressively worse. Because that's when it started going to shit. So... We've got another one on the way and we'll throw that in and see if that starts it if not i don't know what else it could possibly be because if fuse 5 isn't getting any power when cranking you know that that powers the fuel pump and the tank and the what else the injectors sends the input pulse or whatever and you can bypass the uh, fuel pump relay down here on the fuse panel like i did in that one video to get it flushed out that'll turn on the fuel pumps. So I know that the wiring is good. It's just something fucky going on over here with either relays, which the relays are good because they came out of the blue car and I know they're good. The ECU is good. The ignition control module is good. This is the only thing I could think of being bad because when you do the key, do I not have the keys in this car? No, they're upstairs. Anyways, um, this trim piece is a little messy. And when you go to turn the key, you don't feel the uh, the physical clicks between one, two, and three. 
and it's kind of just a smooth transition. And I think this being messed up kind of binded the key and over time it just made the ignition work harder than it has to. And that's what eventually let that switch go. And if that's the case, that was the reason this car was parked 10 years ago and the guy just couldn't figure out what was going on like I couldn't, but just out of a hunch, I'm gonna replace this and see what that does because that's the only thing that makes sense at this point. So I'll push out this week's video and when the switch gets here, we'll post a new video and see if we're up and rolling by then.